our buddy from CBS. And he's got his own local radio show uh, down in the great city of Balmer. None other than Jason Lockenforia. How are you, Jason? Hey, what's going on? What's going on with you? What's up with you? Living the dream, man. Why not, well, right? You know. Is this is this is this a quiet time, or is this a time where or do your phones not burn up as much right now, or the fact that we're in the uh, t- fr- uh, franchise tag period, hurting hurtling inexorably towards uh, a new league year, but no combine? What, what is this kind of a downtime a little bit, Jason? Um, well, I mean, normally it would be you know I think in, in normal times we would be in Indianapolis. We would on our way to Indianapolis. There'd be. Plenty of that going on. We would know what the cap is, and there'd be um, a fair amount of activity. So it's, I guess it's a little bit of a calm before the storm. But, you know, as we know, there's going to be um, a lot of guys let go over the coming weeks. Um, eventually we will have more certainty on exactly what um, teams will, will, you know, have in front of them in terms of economic parameters. And the business of football, uh, the business of football certainly – marches on i i think this will be a different off season in terms of access to facilities and even players in facilities um and we may, we may never get back to the days of you know media in two or three days a week through the entire spring with otas and you know all that stuff um might go by the wayside um but yeah it's it's busy i mean obviously anytime you've got the potential for a blockbuster quarterback trade or we've already had a couple and more could be afoot, and you know this Big Ben thing uh, is not put to bed yet. Uh, and and Alex Smith, so yeah, I, I guess relatively speaking, Rich, it's it's a little less crazy than other times of the year, but we're about to get there. Well, in your answer to my macro question in your preamble, you you mentioned a few things with Big Ben and Alex Smith and other quarterbacks of the monster trade, and I want to get to those. But before that, normally I don't like to talk about the business of football because I don't know how many. Fans are terribly into the the business aspect of it, but the business aspect of it does actually affect whether somebody like, say, Juju Smith-Schuster is going to be retained. I've got Chris Godwin on in hour number three, or the fact that Von Miller could be cut or things like yep. that based on the salary cap. And, you know, and I, I'm just wondering about the cap and, and how it's affected. Uh, wh- when, when are we going to find this out? When, when are, when are G- I had Jason Light on yesterday. He said, good question when I asked when he's going to know what the, the number is because it is going to be appreciably lower than expected, correct, due to COVID-19? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's a thing. Do I think it's as big of a thing as teams are making it out to be? Are they hiding behind it a little bit, kind of waiting for others to blink? And, and also knowing that – except for these rare occasions where we're talking about specific quarterbacks and specific contracts that are probably only going to be moved to a couple of places. You know, by and large, I think most teams are content to let things play out. Even the franchise tag period itself, nobody feels the need to run out there and slap a tag on somebody the first moment that you can. Um, But is it something that, you know, at two weeks from now, becomes an eventuality. Sure, but I mean, look, the cap is going to be somewhere between 185 and 190 ish, and and I guess maybe a little higher if if things go completely crazy in some of these TV deals and they get done um, in short order. But I don't know how you could bank on that. But I, I think at this point, if you're projecting around 185, give or take a few million either way you're going to be in the ballpark. Uh, But I think it's more about, well, well, they haven't cut their guys yet, then we're not going to start cutting our guys. And, you know, this whole sort of, you know, game of chicken that's played sometimes where the teams certainly that are in cap compliance and don't have to worry about redoing a bunch of contracts to get under the cap. You know, I I think for them it's business as usual, but they they have the – the wherewithal to be patient, to let these other teams slowly have their bloodletting, to then start digging through that sort of um, pile to find their treasure. So uh, the 185 would be um, how 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 much less than what they would expect? 10 million, 15 million? I mean, that's that's a significant amount of money. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, if you were continuing to just project forward with how the cap would be moving, then it would be considerably less. But if you <laughs> you'd also you know, if that's how you were operating, Rich, then shame on you. No, we've all I know this pandemic. I we, hear you. We saw, you know, a season with no people in the stands by and large. Um, 
So this was going to be something that was going to impact the 2021 season and, and especially the economics of the 2021 season to great regard. And the reality is the league year starts in, in the middle of March and we weren't going to be fully vaccinated by then. We weren't going to have a whole lot of assurances by then about what stadiums are absolutely positively going to look like, you know, in August and September of, of this year. So, I, I mean, I, I you would be kind of grossly negligent to have been operating no, I, I, internally in anything other than, okay, it's going to be in the 180s I in hear all you. likelihood. I hear you. It's just and last one on this before we move on. Uh, are you saying that the current TV deal negotiations, if they come through, might actually affect this salary cap right here, right now? Because what you're hearing is that, uh, you know, uh, my bo- current bosses, your former bosses, are, are, are asking uh, so much for Monday Night Football that uh, Jerry Jones might personally own Mr. Toad's Wild Ride and both theme parks on both coasts by the end of this conversation. Uh, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, there's a negotia- active negotiations going on. Um, my bosses, your bosses, yes. um, a lot of people's <laughs> bosses, uh, trying to figure out exactly what the right number is and what makes sense for them. Um and I think some of these deals are probably further along than others. Um, but but, look, but what, if, could if it affect the cap? Sort of could Jerry it rigging a cap, right? Yeah, right? The more future cost certainty you have and revenue certainty you have, the easier it is to okay. borrow against tomorrow to make the pot bigger today. Um, eventually, they may run out of time, you know, and it just may be it is what it is. Um, but I have found in my experience – that even in normal years, you would have the salary cap negotiators and um, front office people go down to Dallas for the NFL Management Council meetings around Thanksgiving, and they'd come back with a number, and then the NFLPA and the league would meet at the combine to set the final number, and that number would invariably be much higher than sort of the worst-case scenario that would be issued to the teams, you know, three months prior. So, where there's a will, there's a way, and it's in everybody's best interest to do it. Um, but do I think we're going to look at a scenario where it's at one, you know, it's pushing 200? You know, I, I just, I, I, I don't. I think we're starting to run out of time for that. But if you're projecting, again, 185, maybe they goose it to 190-ish, you know, could that cost you a player? I mean, is that a significant difference for some teams more than others, especially the ones that are thirty million over? Right. But by and large, for the rest of the league, I think it just creates, like I said, an environment where, well, we don't need to rush out and do anything. Let's let this market settle. All right, Jason Lockin for a CBS Sports NFL Insider here on the Rich Eisen Show. We started the show by, uh, and you also in your your preamble a few moments ago, uh, that the Big Ben meeting with Art Rooney II, the president of the Steelers, went down yesterday. Called a uh, statement today from from the owner, basically said Ben wants to be here. We'd like him to be here. We both agree, though. We got to find the number. What's the number? What's the number to uh, to keep Big Ben um, in the fold? Him happy, team happy, et cetera, so on and so forth. What's that number? Well, I don't think it's nineteen million dollars next year, Richard. We wouldn't be having, you know, multiple <laughs> press conferences and Zoom meetings, right. and, you know, statements coming out every 12 to 24 hours. Um, and, and really, everyone's kind of tap danced around this. But the, the sort of awkward, messy, uncomfortable conversations haven't taken place yet. And I can see why neither party would want to dive in and, and entertain that process. Well, well, well what are those? I, Is it more than money? Is that what you're inferring? Well, no, right I mean, there? I think it's, it's, it's clearly money. I mean, okay. it's, it's absolutely money. It's how much is guaranteed. It's how much are you paid this year. It's how much is rolled into incentives likely to be earned or not likely to be earned. It's sort of the, how you know, the, the, the ingredients of the sausage and, and how it gets made. And this isn't, if this was a simple, we're going to give you all your money and we're going to give it to you up front now instead of you earning it over 17 paychecks and we're going to convert it to a bonus and add two voidable years. It nice. wouldn't even be a conversation. That wouldn't, it would just be a paper transaction that the Steelers could have executed at any point. But, but, but Colbert, yeah, game, right. But Colbert, we're yeah. not talking about it, you know, in late February. Right. But Colbert, basically, uh, the general manager uh, wouldn't allow anything other than the fact that he's currently a human being under contract, yeah. which is really weird. And now, but it, it, so what would be the alternative? They're going to run up, run it back with Mason Rudolph that they that they hope that Dwayne Haskins, who they acquired, 
um, you know, uh, a, a couple weeks ago is is going to turn things around and and be the guy to to try and beat a a a, 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 res, a surging Browns team or a Ravens team that does appear to be set now year in and year out with Lamar. I mean, like clearly Ben's the the at, at pushing for a uh, pushing forty Ben for the Steelers right here right now is the got way to like what. What's the alternative if the number's not found? They got to find a number. Is basically what I'm av- uh, essentially landing on with you right now. Yeah, or no? Am I off? No, I, I mean, I, I their number might not be his number. I'm you sure. Know? Like, what if their number's twelve and his number's sixteen? I mean, I, I'm just throwing it. Clearly, oh. ownership doesn't want to pay this guy nineteen million dollars. Like, that's the. I don't know how you could look at this scenario and say that that isn't one obvious sort of takeaway from how this has played out. Um, and the number's probably fairly significantly below 19, or we still wouldn't be playing this word game a month after the season. You know what I mean? Not really wanting to dive into the meat and potatoes, but talking around it. I don't know what the number is. I'm not even sure if it's been absolutely stated to um, the employees of the Steelers who will have to go about – negotiating this compromise but there is clearly some reservation about that level of compensation for this player given what they saw in the second half of last year um and my suspicion is someone who's covered a lot of these things as again if this was a million bucks or a couple of million bucks i don't think you and i are having this conversation trying to read tea leaves i think it's i think it's a done deal now maybe they'll get together with his representation and it'll be done in a, in an hour or a couple of hours. I, it hasn't happened yet. So I don't know, but they have set this up to be something very different than all their previous kick the can down the road. Nothing to see here. Um, we're just converting uh, future money into present day money. And we're changing it from base salary to roster, you know, bonus and signing bonus and, you know, right. We don't even need, we, we can just do it over the phone. Jason Lock and Fora here on the Rich Eisen show. Let's, let's, uh, let's do some quick hitters. Um, just a couple weeks ago, sir, where you, uh, threw out there on your Twitter feed that, uh, Russell Wilson's been sacked in a, in a bunch of, a bunch of times you threw the number out there and you said that this bears close monitoring. And then, you know, uh, Russell Wilson was on uh, DP show uh, mentioning, <laughs> sort of essentially saying, yeah, let, this should be monitored. Um, and uh, are, are there calls coming to Seattle for Russ? Like, what what is actually cooking there that could lead to something other than the, uh, the assumed uh, role that Russell has had there in Seattle continuing? Um, yeah, I mean, look, everybody ultimately has a price. There's a price on every professional athlete's head in terms of trade compensation, whether it's stated or unstated, whether it's known um, because they've had internal discussions about it among the people who currently pay his checks, or, or whether it's, you know, art. I'll know it when I see it. You know, when I hear it, it'll, it'll happen. Um, I'll, that will be enough for us to say, wait a minute, door B is better than what we currently have in door A, especially because things between us and the guy on the other side of door A just aren't rosy right now and, and you know, maybe won't be imminently more rosy anytime soon. So I think that's just something that, you know, it's a lot of time between now and the draft. And teams had been hearing rumblings of discontent there before I heard it. I started hearing it the weekend of Super Bowl Sunday, and then I did more digging, and the more I dig the more it was clear to me that there was some real there there. And then, as you said, Russ basically confirmed everything. And for Russ to speak the way Russ spoke, um, knowing him, knowing sort of how um, guarded he can be and and how calculated he would be about what he says and what he doesn't say and, and how close he'll go to towing certain lines and how much he won't, I thought it spoke volumes. And that just intensified the – calls from other teams and i don't think that it will necessarily let up anytime soon and at some point does somebody say something that john schneider and pete carroll kind of jump up from their seats and and talk about and strongly consider i mean 
I don't see why that's an impossibility. Well, it's because Geno Smith's there, Jason. I mean, and I, and I say that with the ultimate respect. Like, uh, what, I mean, and that's what's so surprising to a lot of people. I've heard rumors to that effect way back even to the draft in Dallas where Baker Mayfield was a first-round draft choice. Keep an eye out for Seattle maybe choosing a quarterback yeah. in the draft. I mean, I, I've heard that for you. But what is it? you got two insanely positive, successful guys in Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson. What, what is the, the there that might be there? For, well, for I mean, look, uh, you know, when, when they had boots on the ground watching Josh Allen, uh, you know, a personal workout, that caught some people's attention. And they did a deal a few years ago. I'm old enough to remember that wasn't just a hand sliding into a glove. That was a long, arduous process that took some twists and turns and had periods of time where one side or the other was, you know, incommunicado. Uh, that was a staccato process that wasn't exactly linear and, and wasn't as simple, frankly, as a lot of franchise quarterback extensions are. Um, I, look, he's not getting any younger, and he's still getting hit a lot. And you're, we're in an era where players are, are seeing with increasing regularity that they can kind of rattle chains a little bit, and, and they, they can. Um, yep have more of a say in what's going on around them and how they're incubated or how they're not incubated um, and how assets are deployed. And he's seeing these guys 10 years older than him, one guy in particular, continually fight for a Super Bowl and, and kind of call his own shot like Babe Ruth, pick a team and win a Super Bowl. Uh, and you, you kind of start looking around and feeling 10 years in your football mortality a little bit. And if you truly want to be that great, um, and you feel like there's certain things you need to get there that they don't seem to really want to give you, or certain, um, you know, a certain sort of level of, of of voice or ownership of the situation that you don't feel like you've been granted with each year that goes by, and things don't necessarily change, then that frustration can mount. And I think that's kind of where we are right now. And is it completely untenable? No, um, but I. You know, why Why was it weird a couple years ago? You know what I mean? Why yeah. hasn't it gone as swimmingly as some some other um, of these situations when you have a guy who's that good? Last thing. I, don't, I don't know that I exactly know, right. um, but it's sort of a thing, you know? It's it sort is. Of, it's it, a lingering thing. It, it keeps going on. Last one for you, Jason. Um, you know... <laughs> This one surprised me, um, Alex Smith telling GQ uh, essentially that um, Washington didn't want him there. He kind of put a wrench in, in their plans by um, by actually still trying to play football. And interestingly enough, that wrench was quite a crucial tool for them, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, in the second half of the season that they hoped that they could use with all due respect to Taylor Heineke. But they didn't see it, didn't want me there, didn't want me to be a part of it, didn't want me to be on the team. The roster didn't want to give me a chance. What do you make of all that, Jason? Just filed 1,400 words on that, Rich, <laughs> literally a couple minutes ago, which should okay. be up at CBSSports.com um, a little later this afternoon. I'm not surprised by any of it. I think that, um, you know, the professional sports is a meat grinder. Um, it, there are issues of roster clarifications and stipulations and there's salary caps and there's guaranteed money and there's sort of these factors that um, can kind of thrust people together and it was his contract that kept this thing thrust together if Bruce Allen didn't give him that extension which even at the time people thought was a little bit exorbitant and if it didn't have that much guaranteed money going that far into the future then let's be real, right? Ron Rivera's coming in. It's a new program. He's kind of saddled with this Haskins thing. He's battling cancer. It's in a pandemic, and he brings this system guy, Kyle Allen, along. It becomes pretty clear by week two that Kyle Allen's going to play football really, really soon and that they want Kyle Allen to be the guy. And then at the same time, there's also Alex Smith doing this incredible thing, but doing this incredible thing that the medical community and the football world are like, you know, like, We've never seen anything like this before. We don't know exactly how this is going to go. And, you know, it might not be feasible. He, he might not be able to do all the things you have to do over the course of these months in a pandemic to actually be able to play football this year. Um, so I, I'm not really surprised by it in the least. Uh, 
it may surprise some people that Alex Smith said it. I think he has every right to say it, and and he should say it, and it's sure. part of his story. So I guess in but, the but, in the thirty but, seconds that I have this left, this was a marriage of convenience. You know what I mean? This was a marriage that was sure born of things that predated this arrival of this these guys in this organization, and you know there wasn't a whole lot of kid glove stuff going on with Haskins. I'm I'm not surprised that they weren't investing every waking moment in this recovery because we're trying to build a long-term thing here, and this guy's 36, and he's not really going to be a part of that. Right, exactly. So I, I guess I've got 30 seconds left. Uh, is Alex Smith a player to to put on this carousel as a free agent in the NFL or stay in Washington oh, I, right now? I, I don't think, you know, I, I never thought he'd be back in Washington. Um, I, I don't uh, – it was a tough – you know, he overcame a lot. There's – if you watch him play closely, there's a lot of limitations there. I mean, does an Andy Reid or does an Urban Meyer, somebody like that, who know him, bring him in in some capacity? I think, sure. Um, Urban Meyer. Him playing week in, week out at this stage, I-, I don't know about that, Rich. Thanks for the call, Jason. You take care. You got it, buddy. Have a good one. That's Jason Lockin for. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.